trying to do a job that is critical to our lives and safety. Caroline, have you been surprised at all by the backlash? Because a lot of people have gone out there talking about their privacy, talking about feeling very violated. Uh, are you surprised that people are objecting so much to these procedures? Well, I'm actually surprised, Shannon, that they're not objecting more. According to recent polls, only a third of Americans are opposed to what I actually consider to be very invasive procedures, whether it's nude photos or groping, and I don't think those should be our only options. Um, and I don't think that TSA has done a very good job having a public dialogue about what, why this is necessary. I, I know there's some debate about whether or not it would have caught the Christmas bomber, uh, but to get back to your original question, I'm actually surprised that more people are not kind of protesting this. In fact, only 3% of travelers have refused to go through the scan that takes a nude picture of your body. And Susan, do you think people are more worried about the nude picture or is it about the radiation? What is it about the scanners that bothers people so much? I, you know, I don't know, Shannon. I've been through them so many times and you probably travel a lot. I'm sure we all do. I've been through them. If somebody wants to look at my bones on a picture, you know, this is not girly, girly gawking here. These people are doing a job. And, and, and the reason you can't have more public debate, frankly, is because you don't want to tell the terrorists ex the, exactly what we're doing or why we're doing it or why it's necessary. I, I think the American people are way ahead of the politicians on this one in terms of putting safety first. If there are individual TSA officers who are abusing their power, they should be punished. But every single one I've ever met has been both courteous and respectful. Well, Caroline, you know, Susan talks about these pictures and how, you know, this is not going to be exactly, uh, you know, pornographic picture. I mean, they're hazy, they're sort of cartoonish by the by most of what we're, we're seeing of these scanners and what's available out there. But I know a lot of people say, hey, even if it's not that detailed, I'm still worried that these machines can store or even send these images elsewhere. How worried should we be? Right. Well, you know, I, I trust the government. I really do trust them to make good decisions about these photos. But just the, the idea of having the government, I, I, the, the photos are not necessarily hazy. Uh, you can actually see whether or not a man has been circumcised. You can see whether a woman has been on her period. And the, the problem with that is that if you don't go through that, then your private parts will be groped. I don't think that, that those are good options. Um, I wish that there had been, and I'm glad to see the, the Obama administration now saying there will be more debate and dialogue about this. Uh, I find it to be a Fourth Amendment issue as well, an unreasonable search. Um, and, you know, you know, I, I'm concerned about having, um, you know, Americans kind of go along with this without really questioning what it means constitutionally. I mean, Susan, those sound like pretty detailed pictures. That's a little bit more than I've been led to believe until this point. I don't care, Shannon. If it keeps the air safe, if it means that my kids, myself, my family, our loved ones can travel safe, take any picture you want. I mean, I, I, I almost find it funny. You go on Facebook or any of these social media sites and hear of people voluntarily, you know, parading themselves, half dressed, right? Sex videos, all this junk. You want to get upset, get upset about that. But the government's effort to keep us safe at, and just because I teach constitutional law, I will say that I think clearly this is not an unreasonable search and seizure under the Fourth Amendment because, you know, the government is doing it in a way that's fair. We're not singling out some people. Everybody's subject to the same kind of scrutiny. And frankly, there is a compelling interest here in keeping the air safe. Uh, Caroline, I want to give you the last word here on this particular topic. But let me ask you, uh, if you object to the scanners, if you object to the pat downs, uh, do we go the route of El Al or those uh, airlines that take hours to interview people to watch their behavior? I mean, what's the next best step? Well, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert on this, um, and Susan makes some very good points um, about all of this. Um, I think the next step would be to have a public dialogue about it and to have the experts convince us that this is necessary. Um, I, as far as we know, the biggest benefit right now are the security, uh, the folks who are making money off of this, including Michael Shertoff, the former head of the Department of Homeland Security. It seems like a conflict of interest to me. It seems like the market is actually driving this more than safety concerns. But I agree with Susan, safety concerns should be our priority. All right, Caroline, Susan, please stand by. Thanks for debating that topic. Coming up next.